There's also widely regarded to be nigger lover. It's one of the interesting translations that one often comes across with the term like that. A lot of people who works in Houston's local rap industry told a music journalist recently that he's been called a knuckle by his own family members who live in South Texas due to his southern accent, his fashion, and the distinctively Houston style of rap music that he listens to. Knuckle, as he explains, is short for a nigger taco. Many working class area Latinos thus boast about their ties to blackness and about their pride in their southern roots. They even suggest that by comparison, Latinos in places like Southern California are constrained by the influences of Chicano cultural nationalism originating, originating in the 1960s and that they all too easily buy into stereotypes of Cholo or low rider culture without realizing just how profoundly influenced they too have been by blackness from black political culture. This they explain is seemingly exacerbated by the popularity of Chicano prison gang culture in California, as it has been popularized by Hollywood movies. While he certainly glossed over the diversity of Latino culture in that region, and even admitted that Latinos in Northern California were rather different from those in Southern California, Houston's Chingo Bling explained, we go, out, we go about it a different way than Californians. Out there, the rappers use a lot of different symbols, the Aztec calendar and the style of tattoos, they look at us like we want to be black, and we look at them and say, man, they're fools are straight out of the movies. <laughs> this also seems evident in the language and dialect of Houston Mary Latinos, according to Chino Blake. He argues that many of them do not speak proper English or Spanish, but rather a new regional platform that he has named, that he has named Wet Bonics, <laughs> a word that combines the term wetback with the bonics. <laughs> this dialect filters northern Mexican slang through southern black slang, and is the product of Mexican immigrants learning to speak English by mimicking their African and American neighbors, classmates, and co-workers. So therefore, blackness becomes a way for them to become American. This is an assimilation Wet bonics is thus seen as a linguistic survival tactic because it helps Latinos to shed the stigma of being identified as the perpetual immigrant and or outsider. They become insiders, albeit differential, by performing a linguistically hybrid articulation of blackness. And lastly, one of the more controversial examples of this linguistic hybridity is through their use of the term nigga as a self and pure reference, almost like the music. This is the MIGGA version. While there is indeed much controversy about the history of the word nigger, the socio linguistic cousin nigga, within black communities, debates over the use of the term by Latinos and other non black ethnic groups offers us an intriguing, an intriguing lens for us to think about the relationships between blacks and Latinos. Latino musicians from cities like New York and Los Angeles, for example, have been openly criticized by civil rights organizations for explicitly using the word nigger in their songs. However, their use of the word pales in comparison <coughs> to the lyrics that have emerged from Houston areas, the Houston areas of Latino rappers, and generally without any controversy. As a local journalist recently explained, Hispanic Houston rappers use nigger without blinking. According to Chingo Blaine, the use of the word nigger amongst Houston area Latinos is so common that it has fueled rivalries between him and California's Latino rappers. As he explains to a local music journalist, I heard a little rock from San Diego interview, and people ask him, why don't you use the N-word? And some of your peers, your peers do. And he's like, well, I'm not black, and we have our own slang. And in response, Chingo Blaine argues, I won't call it an older traditional view, but it's just kind of different. They're like, those Texans think they're black. That's why they call us nigger lovers. Well, Randall Kennedy has argued that the prolific use of the words like nigger and nigger amongst non-black peoples has essentially depoliticized their historical meanings. Its use by Houston area Latinos, specifically those of the working class, seem to have repoliticized the region's black history in the Kennedy Court. From a black artist describing Houston area Latinos as the new niggers after a police brutality case in the 1970s, to the incorporation of Latinos into a self-described black supremacist organization in the new Black Panther Party, from the fusion of blacks and Latinos into a new ethnically compound racial category via hip hop culture, to young Latinos becoming niggers, nigger tacos, or even nigger lovers. These examples suggest that there are new and unique connections between black and Latino lives and imaginations in the Eastern area. These connections have often resulted in the formation of new and trans-ethnic racial subjectivities that a comparative ethnic studies lens helps us to comprehend. Moreover, these subjectivities also challenge us to consider the ways in which new transnational realities associated with globalization or neoliberalism 
are influencing the politics of race in local US spaces. Civil wars produced in the wake of anti-colonial struggles in the mid 20th century, as well as the rise of a post fordist global capitalist economy in the late 1970s, have been both cited as major reasons for a drastic increase of immigrants from the global south to the global north in recent decades. Lo Chi, Luis Torres, and Chingo Ling all became political actors in Houston as a result of these structural realities. Lo Chi came to the United States in 19, 1988 after his father was killed in the El Salvador Civil War. Around the same time, Luis Torres fled the failing agricultural business of his hometown in Maine for better economic opportunities in the oil refinery, oil refinery industry in the Houston area. And Chico Ling's parents arrived in Houston around the same time for similar reasons. Building on Walter Mignolo's concept of border neosis, or hybridity, it's part of this kind of larger body of here is thinking about the notion of community. We can say that the global designs of these new transnational migrations have collided with the unique racial formation of Houston to produce new and hybrid racial knowledges. Terms such as wet black and brown man are privileged, privileged examples of this. These developments suggest that the smaller overall percentage of the African American population now in Houston has not necessarily decreased the influence of its history or its opposition to culture. As Latinos are targeted for similar forms of subjugation, with which blacks in Houston are all too familiar with, blackness is in the process of being transformed, or what I would like to argue, remixed, into an essential ingredient of overlapping 